Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Glad to be back. Right. The topic of my speech today is Brazil. Uh, I just went down for a two week vacation oh. with my family, mm -hmm. and I, I've got a map here that's going to illustrate a little bit. We're going to take a, a um, adventure tour today, awesome. Awesome. and we're going to head down to Brazil. <laughs> and first, we're going to go to Maceió, which is a coastal city right on the eastern coastline of Brazil. <coughs> Then we're going to move inland to a thorny uh, desert area called Piranhas. And finally, we're going to fly all the way across the country over by the border with Paraguay and Bolivia. And we're going to go to Cuyaba, which is an area renowned for wildlife and <coughs> bird watching. So that's, that's kind of the tour. And uh, you might ask, why Brazil? Well, with me, Brazil is about family. My uh, father-in-law and my two sisters-in-law uh, still live down in Brazil. My wife, Cressy's up here with us. But we, when we think about family, a large number of them are down there. And when I first met Cressy, we went down, and we were going down every year or two. You know, it was fantastic. We were just the two of us. And now we have three kids, and now it's more like every five to six years <laughs> if we can actually scrape the money. It's, it's, it's a long trip. And the first flight uh, from LAX down to Sao Paulo, which is the, the big port of entry, to the south, it's it's down here. That takes about 12 and a half hours. So, so it's, it's a major undertaking, but it's well worth it. And that's what I'm hoping to convince you today. So the, the family lives in Maceo, which is on the coast, and it really is uh, all you can imagine in terms of tropical beauty, like uh, all the palm trees, the uh, white sand beaches, and the, uh, the the warm temperatures, those tropical breezes rolling in. And when we head down, uh, we get to the airport. It's a little unassuming airport, and we have about a dozen members of the family who've rolled out to, to greet us, and they're pretty excited. And, and my kids are kind of staggering off the plane, you know, just uh, totally jet lagged. And, and then, but then uh, they're enveloped in the family, and they usually rush us off to a restaurant and uh, couple uh, caipirinha, which is a stiff drink made out of sugarcane alcohol with lime juice. Mm -hmm. uh, kick a couple of those back, and it's sure to ease your adjustment <laughs> <laughs> in the country. And the, so the, the first uh, destination being Maceo, this country is huge. Uh, it's almost as big as the United States. The, mm -hmm. Brazil takes up most of South America, uh, more than half, in mm -hmm. fact. And it's about uh, 2,500, 2,700 miles uh, wide and almost as long. So it's almost as big as, as the uh, lower 48 states. It's just uh, vast, and that's something that impressed me, impresses me when I go down. So we, we started out here, and the things you do, it's, it's really life's a beach. Go out to the beach every day. The first four days, we went to the beach every single day a different beach every day, and there's different activities you can do, such as uh, sitting under a coconut tree, uh, sipping different beverages. They have this really strong uh, coffee that's good. They call cafezinho, and they, um, they serve it on the beach. So you, you get a couple of those in your system, and the kids are making sandcastles and things, and just uh, it's uh, sunscreen was needed, of course. My little guy, Ian, uh, he just ran out. He ran way out into the reef and the shallows, and uh, we, before we could get him, and he got some first day, so that wasn't good. But uh, the, um, the activities are, are variable, things like paddle boarding, also coral reefs, uh, some good snorkeling. And the, there's, it's, uh, it's really incredible because there's like three different reefs off the coast there. And my uh, brother-in-law, Pablo, challenged me to swim out to the furthest one with him, which uh, seemed like a good idea at the time. And they, they assured us that there was no sharks, but I made this mistake of taking my uh, seven-year-old son Ian and my 14-year-old Conrad along. And so when we got out between the second and the third reef, uh, Conrad yelled, shark. Oh. He goes, shark, dad, shark. And uh, I thought it was a hoax. And Ian, of course, panicked. So he uh, climbed on my head and um, forced me underwater, and it was getting uh, pretty turbulent. So he, he's like grabbed me, which wasn't a problem, because I used to swim when he was little with him on my back, like holding on to my neck. But now he was like choking me and pushing me underwater. So I, I was able to swim to the top, and I, I was kind of out of breath. So I, you know, he was my son, but I 
tossed him away so he could <laughs> grab a breath. Right. And he, he immediately looked panicked. And even though he's a good swimmer, he started sinking. Mm -hmm. So then I grabbed him. But luckily, Pablo came over and, and uh, grabbed him too. And then uh, we swam in. So that, that was kind of a little bit cool. of excitement. Ooh, but highly, highly recommended. Very relaxing. Uh, and so that's the, the first stop. And then, uh, you know, after a few days of that, it was time to do something different. So we, uh, we drove inland about three, 400 miles to a, a large reservoir, which has a big hydroelectric dam in Brazil. It's on the San Francisco River. And we toured the, um, the generating facility. They had these huge turbines. It was very impressive. So we did that. And uh, we hung out in the tiny little, it's a tiny little village, actually, in the desert with uh, very scenic, though, a lot of history. And this is where we came face to face with the Brazilian, what I call the Brazilian Jesse James. He was a bandit. His name was uh, La Piau. And uh, they have very distinctive, uh, these bandits were active in the 1920s and 30s. And they wore very ex a very distinctive um, gear that was adapted to the thorny desert. Um, so they had like these, these uh, leather, uh, chaps and jackets, and they were, they were um, quite successful bandits. Lapinao's gang, uh, there was about a hundred at, at the peak, and they, they operated successfully for about 16 years. And they got started because they were in an interior region of Brazil, there wasn't much law and order, and his father was uh, murdered by a group of uh, policemen that were against, you know, somehow they had a family feud and, and they got to feuding and his father was murdered and he retaliated. He went in and um, took vengeance on a number of these uh, people who had killed his father. But then he formed a gang because they, they kept coming after him. So um, this was a news to me and, and very fascinating. And of course, my son Ian had to get one of the distinctive La Piao hats. <laughs> So that was a, a great souvenir. And after a few days there, we went back to Maceo and then flew to Brasilia, which, which was then uh, just a stop along the way to Cuiabá. And the reason we went to Cuiabá was because there's a massive wetland area near it called the Pantanal, which is world famous for birds and things like birds, jaguars, uh, caiman, uh, capybara. It's a huge rodent, about, stands about that tall, weighs about 50 to 60 pounds. They go in little herds, and those are one of the big prey of the, of the jaguar. So being a wildlife biologist, I'd always wanted to see the stuff. So I, I told uh, Cressy, my wife, I said, hey, next time we go to Brazil, we got to go to Pantanal. And so we, we went out there, and their um, little eco lodges way out in the, the habitat. And the habitat isn't what you think of like the Amazon, which is dense rainforest. This is very open, is some trees, but open grassland that is you know short grass. It's kind of like uh, California Central Valley in the winter. It's all green, and luckily for us, it was just starting to flood. So all the fish were coming out of the rivers and streams and starting to swim around in these um, wetlands, and it attracted many birds like storks, herons, and uh, the caiman. The caiman were out in the thousands. So we went horseback riding in like two feet of water with all these caiman around, and it, it was very it was. Very cool. It was like uh, being in a Garden of Eden. So I, I call the, the Pantanal uh, Nature's Garden of Eden. And we saw all these other great animals, like crab eating uh, foxes. And once we were horseback riding, and these frogs jumped out of the way, and a crab eating fox ran out of bushes to grab a frog and ate it right in front of us. So that was kind of a highlight. Mm -hmm. uh, just um, a natural wonder that is, that is hard to believe. So that's where we finished our, our uh, trip. And uh, we had. Lots of good memories and times, and really did not um, encounter anything negative. Great country, friendly people, excellent cuisine. I recommend it highly. Mr. <laughs> <laughs>